In this video, I'm going to mainly show a way to acquire images from Google Earth to produce a spherical panorama from any place in the world. In this case, I will use the panorama in a virtual tour along with a 360 video from Google Earth Studio to start off a virtual tour of Vosakos Trail. Acquiring these images requires some patience and extra software for the stitching and post-processing, but in that way we can produce high-resolution panoramas and with better quality. I will use PT GUI for stitching panoramas and Photoshop and Pano 2 VR for editing them. There is a good open source alternative for the stitching and hugging, and as I saw there is a recent update that you might want to check out. All relevant links are in the description below. Before using this method though, you will need to understand the terms of service and consider where you will use these images and act according to the TOS. An attribution to Google Earth and the respective data providers is the list that you can do to start with. Keep also in mind that commercial use of Google Earth's images are not allowed. First, I will export the images inside Google Earth in order to stitch them together and create the starting spherical panorama. Of course, this can be done from any place in the world. It is worth noting that there is a way to do this from Google Earth Studio as well, by rendering an animation as a VR 360-180 video and export it as individual images, but there is a limit of each image at max 4096 pixels to 2048 pixels. So in order to produce a higher resolution, we are going to capture the images from Google Earth Pro and stitch them together in a separate program. To acquire these images, you will need the Google Earth Pro program and a KML to edit, that I will show you how to use. The KML file is used in order to control the area from which you will export the images and the camera. To successfully create a panorama, we will need some overlap from the neighboring images that we will capture and we need to only rotate the camera without moving the position of it at all. Because there is no way to control the rotation of the camera in Google Earth, at least there is no way that I know of, it will be impossible to achieve this kind of camera rotation in predefined steps, so we will use the KML syntax that dictates it. To start off, we will need to open a KML file in a text editor in order to be able to modify the steps of the camera positions. We can start by adding a single place mark, a point, in the Google Earth Pro, that will be the position of our panorama. Then export this single point as KML. Here it is important to choose KML and not KMZ, which is a binary compressed type of the KML format and will not be readable in the text editor in order to edit it. I'm using the Visual Studio Code as my text editor, but you can choose Notepad, Wordpad, Notepad++ or any other. In this part, I will edit the KML file and you can skip ahead since I will make it available from the description below or watch this part to see the logic behind it in order to be able to adjust it yourself. Here I have the folder where I saved my KML file in order to refresh the changes in Google Earth by double-clicking it while I make the changes in the Visual Studio Code. According to the KML syntax documentation, we will need to replace the look at tag with a camera one, since only one of the two is allowed. So I will find the look at tag in the Visual Studio code and delete it and in its place I will paste the camera tag that I copied from the documentation as a reference. In the longitude and latitude tags, I will paste the values from the point that will set the position of the camera. To place the set axis as well, I will put an altitude of 1000 meters. I will also delete the point tag now since I do not need it anymore, but this is optional. I will press Ctrl S to save and open it to see the changes. What I forgot to change is the altitude mode, where I have to put relative to the ground. So now it will be 1000 plus the altitude of the current position. 
To shift the camera to look towards the horizon, I will put 90 degrees in the tilt tag. The heading is zero, which also equals to 360, and that means that the camera is facing north. By putting 30, the camera will aim 30 degrees towards the east. I will aim the first point with 90 tilt and zero heading as 001 and copy paste it in Visual Studio Code. Another way to replicate a selected text in Visual Studio Code is to select the area that we want to and press Alt, Shift and Down Arrow at the same time. This will duplicate it at the bottom. This will come handy in a bit where we will need to paste elements many times. I will name the new place mark as 002 and change the heading to 30. So now we will have two camera positions with a 30 degrees increment towards the east. Before continuing with the duplications of the camera positions, I will put these two points in a folder with the name of 90, indicated that these refer to cameras with 90 tilt value. If I save now and overwrite my KML file, I check it in the Visual Studio code, I will see that my two place marks that I put in the folder are now included in a folder tag with the name 90. In order to cover the whole 360 degrees of the horizon with increments of 30 degrees, I will need 12 place marks in total. So I will go on and select the second one. I keep pressing Alt and Shift keys while pressing down arrow 10 times. Then I will need to change the names of the place marks and the heading and add 30 each time until I reach the 12th place mark with a value of 330 heading. If everything is done correctly, I will end up with a folder named 90 of 12 place marks and each of them will store a different heading with a tilt value of 90. In the Visual Studio code again, I will select the 90 folder and duplicate it and name the new one 60, which is going to be the camera position with a tilt value of 60. I will separate these two folders a bit to have the visual separation that will help me with the changes in the correct folder. The name of the place box will be 101, 102 and so on to help me distinguish them. To change the tilt value from 90 to 60 in this new folder, I will press Ctrl H to open the Replace dialog and set the appropriate values and replace them one by one until I reach the end of the file. After changing the names as well, I will end up with these two folders, the 90 and the 60, each with the appropriate tilt values. I will repeat the same process with a new folder with a tilt value of 30 and names 201, 202 and so on. Finally, I will add one place mark that will face down with a tilt value 0 and name it 000. Now that we have the KML ready for this location, I will double click each of the place mark of the folder 90 and save the image in the resolution that we want. Full HD images, 920 by 1080, will do just fine. If you want higher resolution, choose one appropriate. Before saving the first image, just select all the options from the Save dialog in Google Earth to keep the image as clean as possible. Do not worry about the attributions in the bottom left. This will not show in the final stitched image. Remember though to attribute Google Earth and the data providers appropriately at the end. After we finish with the 12 images of the 90 folder, we will export the images for the 60 folder, but we will skip one out of two. So at the end, we will end up with six images from the 60 folder. The overlap is enough for the stitching. We could have added a 60 degree heading step to approach it differently, but it is all the same. For the 30 folder, we will say one out of three, so we will end up with four images. And we also have saved the 000 
image that points straight down. So at the end we will have 23 images to stitch at 360 panorama and roughly 120 degrees or so vertically. We will fill the sky in Photoshop. If you choose a location and an altitude that you need the camera to tilt up at steps of 120 or 150 or even 190, then you will need to expand the logic of the KML edit and end up with the respective camera rotations. To stitch the 23 images, I will use PDGUI. PDGUI will ask me about the sensor type and info because there is no metadata to indicate any acquisition information. I will skip this by randomly putting a 35mm sensor and a telephoto, but it really shouldn't matter a lot. After the alignment of the images, there is a slight issue as the resulting panorama is upside down. I will rotate it by eyeballing the horizon and with the help of the mouse. I will save the final panorama as a JPEG 8-bit, since there is no point to save it as a 16-bit, which is my default when working with RAW files from digital camera or a RAW. The resulting JPEG image will have the sky as a black area that I will fill in Photoshop. After selecting this area with a magic wand, I will expand the selection a bit, in this case 33 pixels, and fill it with the use of generative fill. Since it is a flat artificial sky, I could have used content of our fill or even a simple blue gradient, but generative fill usually saves the hassle of matching the fill area. To match the edges of the panorama, I will use the offset filter to reveal the discontinuity and blur the part that looks off. It is most of the time the area above the horizon that needs attention to blend seamlessly. To enhance the image quality, I will use curves, a vibrance and a hue and saturation adjustment layers for contrast enhancement, color boosting and add some magenta to the ground. In the case of the hue saturation adjustment layer, I will mask out the sky in order to be unaffected by it. After I am done and I am satisfied with the changes, I will flatten the image and save it. To end this panorama, I will import it to Pano2VR software to add a patch at the zenith, the topmost area of the sphere, in order to blend a bit better, and add there the attribution as well. These spherical panoramas can be used in virtual tools to supplement photographic ones, as I do with the panorama that I made for this video. The rest of the panoramas that I have imported in this video are photographic either from the ground or from the air. These particular ground panoramas are also uploaded to Google Street View. To finish this video and present the idea of using a Google Earth panorama instead of a photographic one, I will make a 360 video animation with the use of Google Earth Studio. I will use just two keyframes, one starting with the coordinates of my Google Earth panorama and at the altitude of 1000 meters, and the second will be the coordinates of my starting virtual to photographic panorama. Because I want this animation to play in a VR headset as well, I will make it slow and I will not change the default direction and tilt to avoid causing nausea to the users that are watching it in VR mode. So this is the final result of the tool. It is now opening on the Google Earth panorama and when the user clicks on the only hotspot available to him, a short 360-180 video will play transitioning from the starting panorama to the point from where the user can navigate to the trail that it is the main subject of the tour.